Hello. And welcome to this Watts tutorial, which is part two of Power BI and Watts REST API. And in this tutorial, I'll be explaining how to use the POST requests from uh, uh, the Watts API to load data into Power BI. And uh, the endpoint we are going to use today is the dynamic yield endpoint, which is a very, very useful uh, endpoint in that you can get aggregated KPIs and yield metrics for any dimension of uh, what's header data. So to start off, I'm going to go into the REST API documentation, which I can find from the help menu. And I'm going to open the app category and find the dynamic yield post request. So the dynamic yield and post requests in general are a little bit different than get requests in that the parameters needs to be passed on in, within the request body. And I'll explain how this is, this is done as we go along. Um, and the dynamic yield request um, in particular has one parameter in addition to the request body that takes the filter. And that one parameter uh, selects the dimensions uh, for which you're going to, uh, for, for the data that you're going to in investigate. So first of all, let me make a filter parameter. Something needs to be in the filter. And in this case, I'll only use the top count uh, and I want top 20. Uh, and in this case, top 20 will refer to whatever dimension I select. So if I, in my dimensions, uh, go ahead and, and say, station name, then all the KPI metrics that will aggregate down to station name and it will show the top 20 stations. So let me try this one out just to show how this will turn out. So now you can see that the station names are listed and for each station name, I get a set of KPIs. So the first station name is Albert Einstein and some numerical value going ahead. I can see a station name called DECN BTS 001 and so on. You can also choose more than one dimension at once. So say that you do station name and uh, yeah, let's do operator. So now there will be one line for each combination of station name and operator, and I'll get the top 20 out of those, those combinations. So, but in, in my case, I don't want to use the station name or operator. I'm going to go with the product name as my only dimension, and I'm gonna get the top 20. So from this, I can go try it out, and you can see the request URL is made out of the endpoint and the one parameter dimensions equals product name. And this shows up like this. So the product name is controller 812 and I can see the number of first pass yield, second pass yield and count and, and so on. So from here, let's go into Power BI and see how we can use this request from Power BI, from the Power BI application. So I'll just like before, I want to select the request URL and I'm going to open up the Power BI. And these are the two reports from the number one video of this uh, series. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new page and I'll call this dynamic yield. And now it's a little bit different. So from here to create this post request, I cannot use the web request setting. So I need to go ahead and create a blank query and I need to type in the query myself. So first of all, go for a blank query. This will show up in my list of queries. And here you can see the high volume and top field that we did in, in, uh, in this video, uh, the first video. And I'm going to add my new query along with this one. So let's rename it first and call it dynamic yield. And I right click and go to the advanced editor. And this will open up a um, text editor where I can type in any connection string that I want to use. So first of all, we need to put in some data here. <clears throat> and behind the source equals, I want to change that and enter my 
type of uh, response data as well as um, as the server address. So I'm going to type in source equals JSON dot document parenthesis start and then web dot contents and parenthesis start again and then the name of your what server. The line ends with a comma and then we do a line feed and I create some square brackets. And within those square brackets, I'm going to add uh, the rel relative path, the path to the actual. So, so here we only have the base address. I'm going to have to add the path to the API endpoint. I'll do that like this. So relative path, LE equals, and you get the API app. We're not after this measurement. Let me see, go back to page and copy this one so this would be my correct relative path next up i need to supply the filter parameters which are supplied as a body and uh, the body is not um, uh, the body part of the request that that makes out the body is not sent as, as text it's sent as binary data so i will need to use a function text to binary so the content is going to be equal text dot to binary in parentheses start and then i get these kind of brackets and with in this part, I'm going to add my filter. And in, in our case, let's go back to the REST API. We can see that the only filter that we added was top count and 20. So we can use whichever of these filters that we want in this filtering. So I could insert a comma here and I can say part number and and specify a part number or a test operation or whatever you want. But in, in our case, I'm going to leave it with just the top count. So I'm going to have to copy this and back into the connection string. And in my case, since I'm using a double quote here, I'll use single quotes inside here. And that is my filter part. So here I'm going to add a comma. And after this, I'm going to add the header data uh, with the authentication. So that part will be like this. So headers equals, and you get square brackets, authorization equals basic and a white space, and our token. So I'll go ahead and find my token. Place that in here. And to summarize these parentheses, I need to add two of those and a comma two of those in the end. So I think this should should uh, be the correct request. So we're defining the server address and here you'll need to replace with your own server name. The relative path is the path to the endpoint in the API. So in this case, dynamic yield. And we have the parameters for the, for the request here, which in our case is the dimensions. And then within the request body, I supply the filter and within the header, I supply the authorization with the token. So let's try and click done and see how that behaves. So now these 20 records are listed and to extract this to a table, I can use this to table button in the top right, top left corner. And I'll select no delimit delimiter and click this button and I can see all the columns. So here I can select which columns I want available in this case, let's just select them all and click OK. 
And here we get the data in a table format. And I can see the different product names listed and I can see the different KPIs. So let's first of all have a look at the data types to make sure that they are correct. So I want this one to be text and I want all these numerical columns here to be whole number and scrolling ahead. I get all the first pass, second pass, third pass and last pass yield metrics. I want those to be percentage. And you can go ahead and for every, every, any parameter you want to use, uh, you should um, make sure that the data type is, is correct. So now let's close and apply, which will take us back to the Power BI application. And let's add um, visual for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and find the product name column and put that in the X axis and I'm going to find Let's use the first pass count in the y-axis and change from count to sum. And let's add the first pass yield as well as a charge. Here you have the first pass yield and uh, volume using the dynamic yield column. And using the dynamic yield column, in addition to having access to any dimension, any parameter from the uh, from the UT header data, you also have access to quite a lot of KPIs. So you can, of course, access both the alarm and uh, and warning thresholds you can access the number of failed and number of passed for each of the steps you can access the trends for any step as well so um, that was what i'm was um, going to show in this uh, tutorial so please have a try using the dynamic yield uh, endpoint to access uh, any yield metrics for any of your data